Roof up, 15 seconds, that's not bad. That's the limiter. I guess that answers that. Oh, that's lovely. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this POV review by Autotop and L. My name is Max, and today we've got the drop top version of the fastest 8 series by BMW, the M850i convertible. And we are going to see today whether this versus the coupe makes a big difference because this car is 125 kilos heavier than the coupe so are we going to notice that is that going to impact performance that's what we're going to find out today so i'm going to walk around and show you all the features the spec we've got it in i'll take it for a drive along this road we'll do a couple of zero to 100 tests and then take it to the autobahn for a top down and top up autobahn run so we can check out what it's like to drive this car at high speeds with the top down but before we begin don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive updates when we upload a new video and follow us on instagram at autotopnl so we've got a sunset orange m850i today with the carbon fiber extras in the front bumper as you can see these air ducts are all carbon fiber these little fins in the bumper we've got the black grille it also has BMW laser light, as you can see, which is awesome. We've got some black wheels, 20 inch, and some Michelin tires, which are super sports or Pilot 4s. Okay, but we've got these gorgeous 20 inch wheels. I really love those carbon fiber mirror caps and we'll take a look at this tire what pilot sport threes that's an older tire but okay uh, we've got the carbon fiber diffuser as well again big exhaust I mean this is all the same as on the regular M850i of course the thing that's different is this 15 seconds this car transforms from a roadster or a convertible and open top to roof up 15 seconds that's not bad it actually has a hydraulic system as opposed to an electric system which shaves off three seconds of that time which is not bad and i'll show you guys the boot as well So you've got this protector, uh, you, can, you can fold this away if you have the roof up. That means that you have a little bit more space and a little bit of an easier entry. And you pull this down because that's where the roof is. So you can't have it both. Uh, but it is quite a large boot, I would say, for, you know, convertible. So let's check out the engine. Uh, we have the carbon core. So BMW have done a lot to make this car as stiff as the coupe. Of course, it's never going to be as stiff, uh, but it's only 2% apparently. We have the same engine as in the coupe, of course, the M Performance 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 with 530 horsepower and 750 newton meters, which is exactly as much as a BMW M5. So that's not bad at all. Zero to 100 for the convertible, 3.9 seconds or 3.7 seconds. I have read both in different media. Uh, so we are going to test it ourselves. The coupe does 3.7. So I would be surprised if this does 3.7 as well, because as I said, they have done a lot to make it very stiff, but they have also tried to save some weight, of course, with this car in general. Uh, but it still weighs almost 2100 kilos but this is very very light because it's aluminium and as I said it has that carbon core so that means that the structure of the car carbon core the structure of the car consists mostly of aluminium carbon fiber and a little bit of lightweight steel uh, this is our draggy GPS performance meter. So because I don't really know if it does 3.7 or 3.9, we're going to test it with this. And I can show you as well, because there are magnets in here, which parts are steel, plastic and aluminium. So if it doesn't stick, it's aluminium. 
this doesn't stick this does this is all aluminium pretty cool right and this is steel this is as well this is aluminium aluminium so there's hardly any steel here this is steel it's pretty crazy right and this of course is steel because the engineers have hot welded or something like that a couple of pipes in here uh, that the coupe doesn't have to make it stiffer uh, because you lose this rigidity of the roof so they had to find some other ways so there's a pipe in here that makes it stiffer and there's a sort of a ring in the rear bulkhead as well to make it stiffer so i'm going to leave the draggy here i think that's okay we'll go to the draggy app and connect it so we're connected and we're going to take it for a drive put my phone in here so the draggy is ready it's on there so when we do high speed stuff I usually recommend people to put it inside the car but since we're just going to do a couple of 0 to 100 measurements should be okay because it's it has some pretty strong magnets so we're going for sport plus mode of course and sport for the traction control sport for the gearbox okay here we go let's see what we can do launch control Three point nine. Okay, I guess that answers that. Uh, we're going to do one more in the opposite direction to see if we can get it any quicker. Okay, let's see. Reset this, buddy. Brake, full throttle, launch control. Come on. Three point nine two. Okay, so the zero to one hundred is three point nine. We actually managed to do three point eight earlier uh, so it is it is very 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 quick okay so now for the good part of this review you can open this roof up to around 50 kilometers an hour there it goes I've got my mic down here so I assume you guys can hear me okay with the roof down windows up and we've got a wind deflector right behind me And now you can enjoy that beautiful V8, which is, is really good. Uh, the only problem is that when you start challenging. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, when you start challenging the car a little bit and the chassis, you feel that it is heavier than the coupe the coupe managed to hide it uh, also because it has four wheel steering this does as well but it seems like that extra 125 kilos is is the drop it's like you feel the fact that it is heavy and especially if you do like a u-turn or like a little slide you feel that that weight moving around and that's also because it is of course less rigid than the coupe even though it is only two percent you don't feel it though when you just oh floor it it the way this this car picks up speed is freaking ridiculous it doesn't feel heavy at all when you do stuff like this it's just sometimes you feel that you just feel that there's a lot of weight to be transferred but it's not, you know, it's not a bad experience or anything like that. It's just noticeable compared to the coupe. You can still slide it around a little bit. You do notice that it is uh, stiffer than the coupe, if that makes sense. Because 
the coupe has more rigidity in the body. They can have suspension that's a little bit softer. And because this is a little bit less rigid, they have to adjust the suspension as well to make it a little bit stiffer. And you do feel that, but all in all, it, it's, it's not a bad thing, you know. We know it, you know, ahead of driving this car, you already know that it's going to be heavier than the coupe, so. Oh, and that V8 is just so good. And it sounds, I think I said this in the review of the coupe as well, but it sounds better than an M5, I think. It's just that bellowing V8. Oh. It's absolutely delicious. This car is one of my favorites of 2019, the M850 in general. And I'm more of a coupe man myself. If I had to choose between coupe or convertible, I would choose the coupe. But I have to say that because you have that, that roof down, that V8 is very, very noticeable, obviously. Okay, so first we are going to do roof down. I'm just going to floor it and we'll see what happens. And I'm also going to assume you guys can hear me and I'm going to turn on the GoPro as well. There we go. So it is getting a little bit loud in here. This car is so fast. I remember driving the coupe and thinking, well, how is there going to be anything above this, let alone two levels? Full throttle, uh, starting at 125 kilometers an hour. That'll give you an idea, 200, how fast it is. And I have to say that apart from the noise, which is pretty, far, uh, really loud, that's the limiter. 260. That's not bad at all. That is actually not bad at all. Uh, you know, it is super loud in here because of that wind. So, I mean, you're not going to have any conversations with anyone that sits right here. Uh, but the wind is pretty much absent. It's just that noise. It, it's not like you're sitting here in a little tornado. This car that gets up to that limit speed is just insane and it's pretty ridiculous that it has that 250 kilometer an hour limiter because it, it just you just feel that this car is so fast and then it's just stopped it's halted by that limiter and you really feel that it's it's a shame okay let's close the roof no, we're going to close the roof after the tunnel. Okay, here we go. Oh yes, that's lovely, that's lovely. Okay, roof up. So I think it's around 50 kilometers an hour you can do the roof. There it goes. 
Yes, windows up. And suddenly it's very quiet. And there we go. Onwards to the limiter. I've got a head up display showing me how fast I'm going, obviously, but also some shift lights. La 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 la, there's the limiter. And then it just. Oh, I, I'm getting some flashbacks from the coupe review, and I read some comments of you guys saying, oh, well, it uh, doesn't matter that it's limited because no one's going to be able to do it. Well, if there's only one person that does it and can do it, I think that's too much already. And there are a lot of people here in Germany that have these cars and they can't do it. It's, it's stupid. It's stupid. I'm sorry, it's just my opinion. Uh, let's get the sport display here as well. So on the Autobahn, do you feel the fact that it is 125 kilos heavier? Not really. I mean, you're not going to feel that here. It is, however, uh, close to a second slower than the Coupe, from 100 to 200 kilometers an hour. Uh, so it's uh, around a nine and a half seconds, I think. Uh, which is still freaking fast, but that's where you see that weight gain. But this car to me feels more like a GT than a sports coupe. It, I don't think it should be judged as a sports car because it's just too heavy for that. You know, it's not going to compete with a 911, 992 convertible or something. It, it's just too heavy for that. But it is amazing as a hybrid between a sports coupe and a GT because it is ridiculously fast it has all-wheel drive you can slide it around a little bit so it does have some nice cherries from all over from both the sports car stuff and the GT stuff I just think that this interior isn't special enough to be able to compete with let's say an S-Class convertible the materials are the materials are all very nice I especially enjoy this Bowers and Wilkins stuff and this door part but I think that this is a little bit too basic and especially after driving the new 3 series which has basically the same stuff you feel like well why is that in an 8 series as well it should have been a little bit more posh and a little bit more luxurious if you ask me uh, yeah uh, other than that I think this spec is really nice this two-tone stuff is cool and I also hate the digital instrument cluster I think it's not pretty not very BMW other than that I really like this car I think it is so nice oh, to have that V8 it's it's almost enough just to have that V8 because who knows how long we're going to have cars like this so we are back we are going to lower the roof oh I also don't like the fact that it has four-wheel steering and that at low speeds listen to that at low speeds, it is really freaking weird. It's like a shopping cart. It's so, it moves around so quickly that you're, sometimes you're caught off guard by that. Once you get up to speed, it's fine because then it becomes nice that it's agile. Oh, lovely. Okay, that was it for this review, guys. I'm going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button right in the middle. You can also check out this POV review or go check out this playlist of POV reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.